Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is food fraud. Um, and food fraud, I, I consider food fraud being more than food. I consider it being beverages as well. You, the consumer, have every right to know what you're paying for. That's your right. If you're paying for something, you have every right to know how it's cooked, where it was produced, how it was made, what's in it. That's your right. Simple as that. And I want to stand up for your right for that. That's why I make my food fraud videos. So the latest controversy is Widow Jane Bourbon. Widow Jane Bourbon, aged seven years in American oak, and it says pure limestone mineral water from the Widow Jane Mine, Rosendale, New York. Okay, I'm going to read an article, part of an article here, um, from the local newspaper. <coughs> this comes from the Blue Stone Press. This came out um, March 1st, 2013. Of course, it's a good year after that. Um, I read this article when it first came out, and then the Century House, which is the <laughs> the caretakers, the owners of the Widow Jane Mine that they're claiming they're using their water, is going to add a comment after the article. So let's start. Here we go. The uh, this local this local newspaper is touting, you know, that we have local Widow Jane Bourbon whiskey. Okay, uh, the Widow Jane Mine on the Schneider Estate has long been known for its mining sites on the Rosendale Natural Limestone Cement, famously used to build the Brooklyn Bridge and so many other things, Statue of Liberty Base. Um, so Rosendale, New York, which is 15 minutes north of me here, world famous for their cement, okay? So this is coming from the cement mines. Um, the Widow Jane uh, was one of the famous mines there. Uh, the mastermind behind Widow Jane Bourbon is Daniel Pareto Preston, founder of Cacao Pareto, an organic farm to bar bottle chocolate and liqueur distillery located in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Preston's idea for Widow Jane Bourbon was 10 years in the making. Okay, He actually bought a house near the mine, near the mine on, uh, on, on the creek up there. Um, so he actually has a summer home, a weekend home, uh, up in this vicinity, in this area. So, uh, let's see. Preston. Preston is an inventor and aerospace engineer whose family has been farming organic cacao and sugar cane in the Dominican Republic for more than 100 years. So Cacao Pareto is a chocolate producer, chocolate maker in Brooklyn. They started distilling about it just about a year ago, only a year ago. Remember this says age seven years, they started distilling a year ago, okay? Um, so, uh, and they make chocolate rums, they make chocolate liqueurs. They also make a coffee liqueur, which is very good, by the way. Bone dry, bitter, like chewing a coffee bean. It's really good. So, and by the way, this is really good stuff as well. So you can't be a distiller in America uh, and not try the country's signature spirit, which would be bourbon. Uh, during a pilgrimage to Kentucky, Preston and Clark discovered the reason why 95% of all bourbon is made there because of the unique limestone aquifer. Okay, the same limestone qualities that are coming out of the Widow Jane mine. Um, our distillery is located in Red Hook on Brooklyn waterfront, he said, and we had some problems with stuck fermentation when starting up whiskey production. New York City tap water is just not good for the yeast's well-being, okay? To keep the yeast happy, we had to do all sorts of filtering and add chemical nutrients to prevent it from going 100% organic. All that changed when we tested uh, the limestone water from the Rosendale Mines. Um, it has the same dissolved minerals as in the water from Kentucky, he said. Actually, it has higher quantities of desirable dissolved minerals. Our yeast went crazy, multiplying super fast and generating beautiful fermentations of the grains. Okay? So, they're only just over a year old, Cacao Pareto, maybe a year and a half old. This is age seven years. This says on the bottle, here's my first problem. Pure limestone water from the Widow Jane Mine. Age seven years, they've not been distilling seven years. They openly admit, not openly, you have to ask them, they, they'll admit that this is bought bourbon from Kentucky or from wherever, from Indiana, from one of the big guys. They went in and bought bourbon. They bought barrels. They're aging it to their specifications. See, in the, in the, the, in the distillery world, you, you can, any of us can just buy, buy these barrels and age them. We can buy anything, just age them and put our label on it. We don't have to have a distillery. Those seem, a lot of, what people don't understand, a lot of things like Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker is not a distillery, it's a brand. 
It's a brand. There's no, there's no factory. There's no company. There's no. It's just, it's a big company, Diageo, which owns the label to Johnny Walker. They bought, they bought the actual property and then closed it down because, it, for them, it's just the label. So they make it at one of their central production facilities. It's just made and put a label on it, along with all these other whiskeys and whatever else is made. It's just like Bacardi. Bacardi has 200 brands, 200 brands, 200 labels, and only 27 production facilities. It's like tequilas. There's 160 uh, distilleries and 1,600 brands. So what happens is all these companies, you just can buy, buy barrels of stuff that's already made and just stick your label on it. So that's what they did with this. They bought stuff that was already made. They're not telling you where it comes from, okay? There's speculation that came from Buffalo Trace. I think it's a lot better than Buffalo Trace personally because Buffalo Trace is not good um, compared to speaking to other bourbons in that price range. Of course, it's my opinion. Um, so now, if you look more closely into it, they're saying, well, we're cutting it. So we're finishing it because when a bourbon comes out or any whiskey comes out of the cask, of the barrel, it's cask strength, it's high alcohol. They have to cut it with water. If you ever wonder why Johnny Walker, Dewar's and all of them are like 86% or whatever it is, it's because after they come out of the cask, they cut it with water. So they're claiming they're cutting this with the water from the Widow Jane mine. So now it's really not being made with it. And they're not, they're, even if they started making it today, even this article's a year old, if they were making it a year ago, it's still going to be six more years before you can get something that's really made with that water. So it's, they say it's being cut with it. How much is it being cut with? Well, it's a small amount of what's actually in here. You have to cut it, the alcohol, right? After testing the water, uh, Pareto immediately purchased a stainless steel tanker truck and has executed a partnership with Joe Turco of Turco Brothers Water Service in Rosendale. Turco owns a portion of the mines. Okay, so Turco owns a portion of the mines uh, in addition to many more water tankers. Uh, aging now has uh, soon been released. In the okay, it's uh, he's saying he wants to use, not wanting to use genetically modified corn for whiskeys, Preston exhaustively researched heirloom corns and latched, okay, so this right here is coming from a big producer. I doubt they're using heirloom corns. Okay, so that, I think this article really needs to note that the whiskeys that are out on the market now, he has no control of what happened seven years ago here, five years ago. He has no control of what went into this bottle. Okay, so just because this article is saying he's doing all this stuff doesn't mean that this is currently what's in the bottle because it's impossible. Um, Uh, we are growing a large crop of heirloom corn this season in Rosendale and Hurley. Um, we have been told we are the only distiller in America that doesn't use GMO corn. Okay, uh, Koval in uh, Chicago does not use GMO corn. We actually have their bourbon, uh, so they don't use GMO corn. Um, Cacao Copreto released 2,000 bottles of their five-year Widow Jane last fall. Um, far superior whiskeys. Okay. Uh, all right, so now that's basically the sum of the article. Now, in response to the article, to the editor and the readers of the Blue Stone Press, the Century House Historical Society believes that it is necessary to address this article that appeared, okay, back in 2013, uh, at a Widow Jane Local Bourbon Whiskey. The label of the whiskey states pure limestone mineral water from the Widow Jane Mine in Rosenvale. This is likely why the Bluestone Press and its readers took an interest to the product, which is true, it says it's local, okay? However, as the owner and custodians of the Widow Jane Mine on the Schneider Estate in Rosendale, we wanted to let the readership know that the water was not supplied by the Historical Society from the Widow Jane Mine for this endeavor, okay? So here's the Historical Society that actually owns and the custodials of the Widow Jane Mine. They're saying they're not supplying the water for this, okay? Uh, we had members tell us that they've purchased the whiskey thinking the Century House, which is the custodials, got a portion of the proceeds from the use of the Widow Jane Mine name. Okay, so the Widow Jane Mine name is it's the mine, it's owned by the, 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 uh, the Century House. They're the custodials. Okay, thinking the Century House got a portion of the proceeds. 
because Mr. Preston claims that the water used in making the whiskey is from the Widow Jane mine. Indeed, the Historical Society has no commercial relationship with Mr. Preston and the manufacturer of Widow Jane whiskey and does not benefit in any way from the sale of this product. Visitors to the Century House have also been under the mistaken impression that the whiskey is made locally, but it's not. Okay, so this whiskey was made in Indiana, somewhere big like that, Kentucky, and then shipped in barrels to Brooklyn. Okay, we certainly understand that marketing, the marketing appeal of the Widow Jane, as its charming and unique reminder of the area's natural and industrial history. This is why the Board of Trustees feel it's so important to keep the property accessible to the public. It is our hope that the community members who find this article interesting can set aside some time during the 2013 season to visit the Snyder Estate, the Widow Jane Mine, and the Cement Industry Museum to learn more about the fascinating history of the Rosendale Natural Cement Industry and its contri uh, contributions to the building of the nation. Okay, our volunteers are excited to welcome visitors. Okay, so now, I personally spoke with people from the Historical Society. They come to my restaurant. Here's what Mr. Preston, here's what uh, uh, he's telling his investors. He has investors for this project. He's been raising money. They, the, the investors, the prospective investors, show up to the Historical Society and think that money is going to Widow Jane because he is actually telling these investors, from what I'm being told, that 15% of this proceeds, the sale, the proceeds are actually going to the Historical Society. The Historical Society told me personally, we don't get anything. He's given us nothing. There's nothing that we've been, we've received nothing from him. Yet he's telling his investors, investors that we're benefiting from. So that's wrong, it's totally wrong. So they're upset with that. They're using the name that, that, that is from the Historical Society, okay? The Widow Jane Mine is on the Historical Society's property. That's their property. The water's not coming from there. It could be coming from who knows? It could be coming from downstream. It could be coming from anywhere. But the Widow Jane Mine, because of, because of its famous, he's using that as a marketing toy. He's using it as a marketing gimmick to, to basically sell this, okay? You know, it's like saying, oh, like, um, Pike's Peak bourbon, right? And it's not even made on Pike's Peak, you know, just because Pike's Peak is a nat landmark, okay? Statue of Liberty bourbon, Statue of Liberty vodka. Well, it's not being made the Statue of Liberty, but it's a landmark and people recognize it and they're using, you know, somebody else's name. So that's basically what they're saying is happening here. Now, here's the really down part, though. Of course, it's a nonprofit historical society for the Widow Jane and the Schneider Estate. People believe that this is their own product, who don't know that this is coming from a distillery in Brooklyn. They think, oh, the Historical Society makes bourbon. They're making money. So the Historical Society point blank told me that their contributions are down because people feel they don't have to donate money to them because they feel that they're in business in this big bourbon boom and they're making money. So she goes, our, our um, contributions have suffered because people think that this is you know, that this is our product, that it's our business, that we're making money, that this is how, she was, that's not the case. We're hurting because of this. We're, this, this is a lose-lose situation for the Widow Jane Mine, for the Schneiders. This is lose-lose. And they've addressed this with Mr. Preto. They sent him letters. They've, you know, they, 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 they've, they've tried to resolve this. And, you know, every now and then he'll change the label a little bit on here where it might say something a little different. But in reality, it's saying pure limestone mineral water from the Widow Jane Mine in Rosendale. Well, it's not based on the historical society. Why would the historical society lie, right? They have nothing to lose. Um, they've already lost, um, you know, donations. Um, so, you know, this is a big controversy up here. Um, Widow Jane Bourbon, seven years. So my advice to chefs who pick this up um, is call. Call Cacao Pareto. Talk to them. Find out what's going on. Tell them you read an article. Tell them you saw this video. Um, I'll, put the, I'll put the link to the article in the description here. Uh, on YouTube. Um, tell them you saw this, ask them what's going on, call the Historical Society, get their side of the story, um, read the article, and uh, and find out what's going on. In the meantime, I don't think that this product is worth buying. I honestly don't think, and I'm honestly not going to support it until I get more definitive answers. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt here to 
from the board of trustees, uh, from the Century House, from the people who actually are caretakers to the Widow Jane Mine. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and um, I think I'm going to donate money to them as opposed to giving this guy money for his product that I feel is extremely misleading. So this product here will no longer be available at my restaurant. This is the last of it, um, and it's too bad because their coffee liqueur is so good. It's just so good, but the, my problem as a business owner is I want to support businesses. I want to support endeavors that are doing the right thing. That not that are lying and manipulating and to people and, 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 and screwing people out of money and things like that. I, I don't want to support that. It's not part of what I want to do in my own business. So it's not part of what I'm going to take my guests' hard-earned money to put towards a company that's doing that. Okay? And I'm not making any def definitive accusations on Widow Jane. I'm just saying, based upon this article and based upon the rebuttal from, um, or based upon the comment from the uh, Historical Society, they're not matching up. There's something definitely wrong here. Okay, there's something definitely wrong where, you know, I mean, where this, it, this takes investigation. So I'm not going to get, I'm not going to give Widow Jane the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to bring their product back in. Um, so it's unfortunate it's a great bourbon, but there's a lot of other great bourbons out there. And there are other organic bourbons out there. So, and there are a lot of other great bourbons from, from, New York, especially from the Hudson Valley, Greater Hudson Valley, that are doing it right, that are using local products, that are that are distilling where their products coming from. They're doing it like like Tuttletown, like uh, Hill Rock. Hill Rock's a great distillery. Um, so, I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.